sweating so bad right now. Talking about this goddamn thing. Ugh, dude. All right, so she used to work at a zoo. No, Steve Bergman Zoo. Yeah, so she worked with his family, mm -hmm. like his son and daughter and stuff. Yeah. Um, and she has pictures. She like had a snake called Fluffy that she took care of from the zoo. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of other animals. She has lots of pictures. But yeah, she's she knows how to like take care of them, how to raise them and stuff. And she wants an called an ivory bone python or something. Oh God. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> you're not even getting oh you're getting like a mutant snake bro Ugh. they're like they're albinos they're fucking yeah. they're they're mutants of <laughs> a fucking apex predator <laughs> that just does nothing but slither and kill oh well they're like she said they're very like eat uh like easy tempered very sweet you ever seen a goddamn snake in a cage with a rat yeah, but that's... Does that looks sweet to you? That's food. We're not food. Until it gets big enough. They, don't, they won't get that. They won't get big enough. Pythons get massive, Lance. Those are different pythons. Pythons get massive. Pythons. Pyth I mean, put it this way. Pythons. My, my whole family. So, not my whole family. My mom uh -huh. had snakes before until she had me. When she had me, uh -huh. she was like, all right, well, that's probably isn't a good idea. Yeah. So, she got rid of the snakes. My uncle... Uncle Billy, he had snakes my entire life, mm -hmm. and I remember I I don't I don't know. Uh, okay, so I don't know why I'm actually afraid of snakes. Mm -hmm. I can remember like two run-ins with snakes. Um, but one of them, I they always had theirs in the basement as a kid in the house they lived at, and I remember my cousins Preston, Jordan, Sarah, and they were like, "Come look at the snake," and I was like, "Eh," and I went down there, I was looked at it, and I remember like. They took it out. One of them took it out and was holding it. Was like touch it, and I was like, I don't think I really want to. And they're like, No, it's fine. Like, see, it's 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 fine. And I touched it, and nothing happened. But I remember this like just like shit feeling. Oh, at school, we had one of those people that come by who had a bunch of animals, and one of them was he had this huge python or boa that he would like drape across your shoulders. And I remember I did it, and it freaked the fuck out of me and he was holding it still but the weight of that thing on my shoulder bro my heart is racing right now <laughs> like oh yeah i mean i i held um two anacondas when i was a kid nah. i had one in each hand and i loved it and ever since then i think i've always wanted one <sighs> and ashley is always like Mentioned like, hey, can I get a snake? Can I get a snake? And I was like, you don't have room for that. But then we've been planning this new apartment, and the we're gonna split like the office, so it's gonna be half my office and half her craft room. Yeah. And I was like, we're gonna have room if you want to get a snake. So we've been talking about plans and stuff. Get a big old habitat in there. <sighs> but yeah, I think it'll be fine. I I don't know much about the ivory bone python that she wants but i don't they're they're not the kind that get like the size of a room like they're gonna stay like small enough to live in that habitat yeah. for their whole life and big enough to strangle you <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i mean like <clears throat> worst case scenario let's say it did get aggressive which it won't but let's say it did get aggressive and tried to constrict or whatever um i could overpower it like you just okay none of that get off Get back in your habitat, but it should be fine. And Wolf is big; he's he's a big dog, so we're never gonna have like a small animal or anything like that. And if we do, like, um, yeah, you just she knows how to raise them. <laughs> I'm just fucking sitting here thinking about this. Oh man, yeah, we were trying to come up with names. We were thinking about like uh, death. Well, she wanted to name it after Fluffy. So she wanted to name it Fluffy, but I was like, well, I want to have a, a you know, I want to have so you some. Like name him Salamence or something? No, I was like, I was like, Floofer. Floofer. Yeah, to like go off of Fluffy, so it's not exactly the same name. And mm -hmm. then I came up with Flucifer. Flucifer. Yeah, Flucifer. That's not bad. Yeah, so we're thinking about Flucifer, but then, but then it's like, going to be forever tied to that identity. So it's like, do we want... To what, like which identity, Satanus or fl Fluffy? Uh, so, Lucifer. 
Oh, yeah, just like yeah. the whole identity of like snakes being like related. Evil to, incarnate. Yeah. Oh. I don't really want to perpetuate that because <laughs> they're really sweet. A lot of them are sweet. I've seen like videos of like snakes like cuddling up and like you know taking naps, licking and stuff. They're sweet, just like all animals. You just have to know how to take care of them. <clears throat> Gulp. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I know. The, I was like, <laughs> I was like, ooh, I, I forgot to tell him. And then the minute I saw your reaction, I was like, shit, I forgot. Oh, <laughs> Ethan's afraid dude, of something. Like pits are sweating right now. <laughs> uh. Well, I, I just, we just had to talk about it last night um, because you know, um, Joey's girlfriend is also afraid Super of snakes. snakes. Yeah, very afraid. So yeah, she should be. <laughs> so we've been talking about like. You know, how much thought do we put into that if our friends won't ever want to come over? Mm -hmm. Does that mean we put that on hold or whatever? Or do we just say, we really want one? Yeah. Like, we should get one and then find alternatives whenever, you know, Yeah. we want to spend time with friends. It's a tough decision. Like, mm -hmm. it's the same as like, I mean, it's not the same. But it's kind of the same as if you make any type of choice like that, like having a kid or something. Like, those mm -hmm. type of choices change things. They do. I mean, it's like, I mean, I guess it's like getting a cat or something and knowing that, like, two of your best friends are really allergic to cats. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess they could take a Zyrtec or something or just suffer through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I would like to come over, but I probably won't. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. I, I I don't think I would be able to cross the, that literally cross the threshold. Yeah. Because I mean I was like that with my uncle. Yeah. Like when I when I became aware of like my fear of snakes, and I guess it started snowballing, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember there was a phase where like because he when he moved into his newer house, he would keep it not in the basement. He still had a basement, but it wasn't like an enclosed or like weatherproof basement. You know, it was like a workshop basement. And so he would keep it upstairs and it was like, you'd walk into his house. Oh no. Initially it was, it was as soon as you walked in his front door, you looked straight like in the living room and it was on the back wall of mm. the living room. And it was the first thing you'd see, dude. Mm. It's just this, this fuck. It. it wasn't, it was a, uh, uh, not a Python, a boa mm -hmm. and, um, red tail, I think it was a red tail boa. I want to say somebody had a red tail boa. Um, but that thing would be there and I remember I got told my mom, I was like, I, I can't go over there. Like, and this is when I was probably in high school, you know? And I was like, I, I can't do it. I can't. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up changing it. And I don't know if my mom told him, because I didn't tell him. I don't want to go. I think I was a, I was a bitch. <laughs> but uh, he eventually changed it to where it was like the hallway off of the main room. And he would shut the door. Mm -hmm. And then I could go into it. But like. One time I came in there and the door was open and as soon as I rounded that corner, all I see, I just fucking saw it there, dude. Ah, God. So what are the chances if we kept it in the office, if you would? Probably not great. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I just, my hands are sweating right now. <laughs> I just, God, I wish I wasn't. I really, I really do. I wish that I, I, cause I know that like it, it's literally all in my head. Mm -hmm. I just, dude, I. Uh, they're just they're paralyzing like i told you about the time that i like at uh the halloween parade where i like my legs just shut off we we're like walking through the crowd at the halloween and that chick had a boa or a python or some kind of constrictor wrapped around her neck walking through the crowd and i was holding shelby's hand and this thing walked i mean it walked it's there dude like there its head is right there at eye level and my legs just quit working and I just fell on the on the concrete. And Shelby's like, get up. And I'm like, I can't move my legs right now. <laughs> like, she, she, had, she had told her that I was afraid of snakes, but she had never seen it. Yeah. And, like, I had never reacted like that before, even. Mm -hmm. Like, complete shutdown. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I wish I wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it's something to think about, like, you know, it's kind of like whenever I was, I used to be phobic of spiders. Mm -hmm. And I would get paralyzed. Yeah, they didn't make a ton of noise at all. Yeah, at all. Um, and I couldn't, I would freeze whenever they were around. Mm -hmm. So I remember we were driving down the highway at night coming from 
Wilmington back home to the beach. And uh, we're driving in my Honda. A car passes, so its lights shine through. Yeah. And there's just like a little, little teeny tiny little bitty baby spider just dangling <laughs> right in front of my face. And I went, ha, <laughs> spider. And my buddy uh, was in the car and he said, because he knew, he knew how I was with yeah. him. And he was like, where? I was like, right in front of my face. And he was like, okay, well, can you drive? I was like, nope. He said, okay, <laughs> just take your foot off the gas and just coast. And I, so he took the wheel. Yeah. He took the wheel. I took my foot off the gas and we just coast, coasted off of the road onto the side. Yeah. So he could get it. Just paralyzed. I literally couldn't move. Dude. But I, I remember when I went through, like, after I got out of college, or kind of when I was in college, I think, I was just in this phase of, like, wanting to change a lot of things about me. Yeah. Um, and that's when, I like, I broke my nail-biting habit, stopped mm. biting my nails and stuff. Um, and there's and then the spider thing was the same. I was just so tired of being phobic of spiders. And, and I knew, like, the logic of it is that 99% of the spiders that I encounter are never going to care that right. I am there, you yeah. know? And so... I started journaling about it. I remember I wrote like a poem about a spider that I killed and how like whenever I killed it, it was so small that like I realized that it was so silly for me to be like think that I had to destroy it yeah. to keep myself safe when like it was literally the same size as a, of like a black ant or something. Yeah. I was like, what am I doing? And then I started like watching videos on them. Um I started They're just trying to do like immersion therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I started like watching them, like instead of like avoiding them, whenever I would see one in the wild or on a wall or something, I would just watch it. I would watch it walk around. I would watch it build a web, you know, or whatever. <clears throat> and that slowly started to make me more comfortable. And uh, now like um, my, I called him my pet spider. He was in the bathroom for like, he's been in there for months. I called him Jerry. His name was Jerry. <laughs> he was in there for months. And I left him because I was like, A, it's a reminder that I've gotten over such a huge fear of mine. Yeah. And B, like, he, I remember when he showed up, there was a, like a, I guess the door stayed open too long and two spiders got in and they were both in the general, same general area. And Jerry killed the other one. Oh. And took the, took over that area in the bathroom and I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, yeah, this is your territory now. You're my you're my new buddy. And so I just let him stay there. I was like, I don't feel like getting him out. He's probably getting rid of some of the smaller bugs that are in the apartment. Yeah. So it was kind of like a cool little bug deterrent. Yeah. And he stayed there for probably, I want to say, I want to say maybe around four months or so that he's been alive. Yeah. And he just died the other day. Huh. It was sad. Bummer. Yeah. I thought he was dead uh, uh, maybe a month ago. He was like kind of curled up in his web up up on the ceiling and I thought he was dead and I sent Ashley a, a text. I was like, mm, Jerry's dead. And she didn't respond because she didn't give a shit. But yeah. uh, then like three days later, he was back moving again and I saw I started to call him Walker Jerry. <laughs> uh, Is and, that how the, the zombie apocalypse starts? Yeah. Uh, spider, something about spider. Yeah. Uh, regeneration. Yeah. Quality. So I call him Walker Jerry. And then, yeah. And then the other day I noticed he was like hanging in his web, kind of like coming down farther than he ever has. He usually just stays on the ceiling, mm -hmm. but he was like dangling a little bit, like hanging on his web. And I was like, I wonder what he's doing. Like, is he trying to build a bigger web because he hasn't had much luck or something? Yeah. And then I'm taking a shower and, uh, I like look to check on him and he's not there. And I'm like, huh? And I look down. And he's on the ground in the water. And I was like, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, no. So I'm like trying to hold the water <laughs> off of him. And I grab my uh, toilet brush and I like kind of like just try to inch him out of the water without like hurting him or breaking his legs or something. Yeah. And I like, get him out of the tub and he never moved again. Damn. I think he was probably just dying. Yeah. He like, had that, uh, that, uh, what do you call it? That, um, like it happens in people, uh, like, that are like going through cancer or like when their body's literally just shutting down because mm -hmm. they're old, like they'll have this like shutdown period. Right. And then all of a sudden they'll have this like 24 to like sometimes 48 hours mm -hmm. of, of like 
vitality. Yeah, of like, holy, shit, they're fine. Yeah, and then boom. Yeah, well, that was his. That yeah. was his one song. Yeah, he was yeah. like trying to hold on a little longer. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's about his lifespan of spiders. Yeah, you know, a few months. Yeah, um, but it was cool. It was like it was kind of like a representation of like my growth with yeah. my fear of spiders. Where they're like, I would say that I'm. Like, not afraid of spiders at all. Except for big motherfuckers. They can stay in hell where they belong. Like the writing spiders? Dude. Anything. See, I actually, I actually love those dudes. Anything that I can hold in my hand, like. Yeah. We have one that nah, he sits dude. outside of our, or he was, uh, this past, uh, when I was working out outside. So that would have been, like, August through November or something. Uh, he was one of those big writing spiders. I mean, I mean, he was, like, legit, like, that big. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't I don't know shit about spiders, so I texted my buddy Caleb, who's a zoologist, and I was like, yay or nay? He was like, oh, no, he's a good dude. He, he eats all the bugs mm-hmm. and, like, all the venomous st- stuff, all the venomous spiders. Mm-hmm. He's immune to it. And I was like, he's like, keep that guy around. I was like, sick. Um, yeah. He stayed up there for a while until he finally died. Yeah. Yeah, if they don't move around, if they stay in their area, I'm cool. If it's, like, the kind that will, like... Spiders that crawl on the floor? No. <laughs> no. Spiders do not belong on the floor. <laughs> they belong in the corners of your walls. Yeah. 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 Around your sink. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I know that I need to... Because I said something to my uh, aunt, who's a psychologist, uh, Aunt Susie, like, last year, the year or two, something about my thing with snakes, and she was like, are you serious? She was like, we can get you over that. And I was like... I don't want to, and, but it's just that stupid yeah. like thing in the back of my head where I'm like just equating it with like a part of my identity or something. Yeah, that like I know that I can, I know I can overcome it. It's just Jesus Lord, man. Well, I think there's two things with that. One is that you can take your journey in getting over it as a new part of your identity, mm-hmm. and then having this story of like being afraid of something and overcoming it, and like being comfortable with that. That's become part of your story too. You know, yeah, for sure. Um, and Secondly, like, it'll just make you feel better to not have something have control over you like that. Yeah, that, and that's what I, I've talked to it about with, with Shelby about it. Um, and she's kind of said the same thing. Like, it would be nice to have, like, that control Yeah, over something that you don't have right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Then you can come over and pet Lucifer. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> well, we're not going to do that for a while. Um we have to like get settled in and stuff first, so it's gonna be yeah. at least I want to say maybe six months before we even consider it. But okay. you know, we'll have some time to think about it. <laughs> that was a bomb. <laughs> I'm settled now. I think a lot of the reasons that we're gonna do this podcast is like we've kind of talked about before, like just like giving our POVs and stuff, yeah, on different shows. But like, or just nerdy topics, or in just nerdy topics that we find interesting. Uh, but like. What as I want to talk about anime for a second. Hard, hard transition. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, what? How have you like changed as far as like why you got into anime and like where you are now with it? Uh-huh. Because like for me, I I mean I still like some of the same stuff, but like I've definitely. I'm definitely at a different end of like what I like genuinely enjoy mm-hmm. nowadays from what I used to just like watch anime for when yeah. I was younger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how did you start? Um. So, or like, yeah, like, how did you actually get in? Like, you remember your first anime aside from like Pokemon? Fuck it, even Pokemon. So, well, I mean, yeah, like I, I was watching that stuff, Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh, like Dragon Ball Z or yeah. whatever. Um. We are of that generation. Yeah. Tsunami generation. Yeah. Tsunami, exactly. I started, like, when I was in high school, or mi- even middle school, I think. I remember, like, we used to do this thing where we had this VHS tape that we could record on, and our TV had a record function. So we would, um, it was like the VHS TV together. Mm-hmm. So we would have to sleep during Adult Swim hours when all the anime would come come on. So I would... Right before bed, pop in the VHS, rewind at the beginning, and turn the TV to um, Adult Swim, and hit record, and then go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, we would mute it or whatever, and then in the morning, I would wake up and it would have recorded, you know, four hours of Adult Swim, yeah. including Samurai Champloo, um, Trigun, like 
Cowboy right. Bebop, all that stuff. Yeah. You know? And so that's where I like got started in, in, uh, kind of like the more like, I don't know, more adult anime, mm -hmm. I guess I could say, rather than like Dragon Ball Z, it like has adult themes and stuff, but yeah, like just more like, it's for 12 year old boys. Story driven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. More story driven <laughs> anime, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it was just, just what they would show on Adult Swim. And then I remember when I was in college, I hadn't like, I hadn't touched any anime in forever, yeah. you know, at that point. And I was living on these people's couch, paying a hundred dollars a month and they had Netflix and Netflix at that time had like a ton of anime. Yeah. I remember that yeah. when they first started like really streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix had so much anime and I had nothing to do. I was chilling at home when I wasn't at work or at school. And so I was just watching anime and I started watching all this, all, all kinds of stuff, just whatever looked cool on the, on the cover art, you know, mm -hmm. on Netflix, I would just click it and watch it. Um, and that's what kind of got my, like my hobby of exploring anime, you know? Yeah. And then I just got obsessed with just watching. I watched everything that Netflix had, like every anime that they offered and then I found out about Funimation. So I got a Funimation account and started watching everything on Funimation. Yeah. But that was only dubbed because I, I only watched dubbed up, uh, okay. up at that point. Yeah. Because I, I thought I was a bad reader. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to follow the subtitles and the show at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, and like you're also just going off of like what you did when you were younger. It was yeah. like, oh, it was all dubbed. It was fine. Yeah. Like, you don't know any different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then this kid told me about Haikyuu. I was just telling the story oh, last night. Wow. Yeah. This kid, kid told me about Haikyuu. I was talking about all the shows that I was watching. And he was like, you need to watch Haikyuu. It's not dubbed, but it's so good. It's mm. so good. And I was like, I mean, honestly, like I was obsessed with exploring anime. Yeah. So by this time I had already watched around like 100, 150 series, you know, mm -hmm. but it was all dubbed. And then he was like, no, nah, you need to check this out. If you like, the, if you like all these anime, you'll love Haikyuu. And so I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And then Haikyuu opened up a world, the world of subbed, you know, like yeah. I just, I watched all the Haikyuu that was there at the time, which was, I think just two seasons. Yeah. And it just changed my life. And like, then I started watching all like the, the subbed stuff on Funimation, yeah. you know, that was a tech on site for me. Yeah. The first, Oops. like, like the first sub that I specifically was like, okay. We're in it. We're we're in it. Yeah. This is. I don't care about. I don't care about waiting for a dub at all. Yeah. Like this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I mean we're we're like the same age, so like very similar story. Yeah. Like I, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Card captors, all that stuff. Zoids, Jesus Lord. Um. But yeah, I I remember like I didn't have cable until I was. Uh. Like fourteen, mm -hmm. and I, I used to go uh, over to this kid Brian's house some 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 days after school, and uh, they had cable in their apartment, and we would watch Dragon Ball Z after school, and it was like that was my like Jesus man, this is so cool. Yeah, I don't know. It was just like that thing of like being like you didn't know why it was different mm -hmm. from like regular cartoons like watching watching like Jackie Chan Adventures or yeah. you know. Lucha Lucha or whatever, it was just like something's different and yeah. I can't put my finger on it of why it's different and why it's like so cool. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then same thing, uh, we ended up getting cable or no, 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 we didn't get cable. I remember it. We were, uh, we went, we went to uh, like Myrtle Beach or Atlanta Beach somewhere uh, and stayed like the weekend. Me and my mom, my dad and brother and stuff, right? And we're like, I sat out, I slept in the, the couch bed in the living room. And I remember staying up and Yu Yu Hakusho was on Adult Swim. I'd never seen a Yu Yu Hakusho before because the current lineup of Toonami was like Dragon Ball Z and Gundam or something. And uh, adult in the Adult Swim versions, like they they cussed, mm -hmm. you know, they cursed. And I remember it was like, it was the episode where he's like, I'll shoot my spirit gun. I was like, I'll shoot my spirit gun. I'll shoot him in the eye. It's like, damn, he's got three eyes. I remember, I remember like, like how it was, I, I don't know if that was a dark term in art, but there was so much like talk of demons mm -hmm. and stuff. And like being from like a religious household, I was like, this is different than yeah. what I usually watch. <laughs> this is not a cartoon that I usually watch. It was just like, so, 
so vastly different. And they were cursing in it, and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, fast forward to fast forward to a couple of years later, uh, I actually uh, found out about New Type Magazine uh, USA, and we used to go to Walmart after like La Hacienda on Saturday nights, mm-hmm. and my parents would. And I remember I saw like one of the covers of new type magazine and i was like oh this is this is this is it this is like that weird animation this is that weird cartoon air Mm -hmm. quotes you know that 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 i like watching and so i got it and i was like oh this is like a whole world like what is this they were like pictures like it's just back in dude 2005 you know yeah yeah and, I mean, there were, like, pictures of cosplayers and stuff. I had no idea what cosplay was. I was like, yeah. what is this, dude? Um, and then, like, and, and also I'm, like, a 14, 13, 14-year-old boy. So, like, anime boobs. You yeah. Know, why? Yeah. They knew what they were doing. Uh, the center, I'm, to this day, to this day, I remember, it was the centerfold of this show called Gravion. Did you ever see that? No. One of the main chicks is, like, this blonde with, like, I mean, her, it, and it would give, like, the dimensions of the oh, yeah. characters on the the thing and it was the most absurd dimensions you know but it's like her like kind of like looking back at the camera with like this crazy ass and these big big boobs yeah and i was like Gee. so i mean 14 years old i'm like oh i'm in this this is awesome but then like you know I, you don't I, I don't i i was in it for those kind of reasons for like the cool fights and the anime boobs yeah and then same thing netflix my mom got netflix and for us, and I remember they had the first one. <laughs> you'll see a pattern here. The first thing that I watched on Netflix was they had the uh, Queen's Blade mm. on there. <laughs> that's, that's all that shit is. It's just fighting and, and tits. Mm. Uh, and so, like that, I was like, "Oh, this is it." But again, I think I watched that dubbed, you know. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until college, same thing, college and. My roommate at the time, Jeff, he was like, you should watch these. It was like, it was Sword Art Online it, and it was um, Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. And I was like, are there are there dubs for it? He was like, no, no, there are no dubs. <laughs> what are we talking about? And because he, he was huge in it. He had been like a lifelong Naruto fan, like week to week Naruto. Oh, yeah. So I mean, he had been in it forever. And uh, he was like, no, there's no dub, dude. So he made me sit down and watch it. In uh, sub, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is amazing!" Like the voice acting was on a different level, and it was like, it was just different. Yeah, it was so different, and that was all I needed. That was like the final hook that just got me in. Yeah, yeah, but like, I, for the longest time, I think like my it, a lot of people, it's like I liked action and and anime boobs, mm-hmm. and that was kind of it. And, uh, I think you're, I mean, it's a lot of people's, but like your lie in April was the first one that I watched that wasn't action oriented. That was just, just a story. Yeah. And it's like a, a, a romance and like a coming of age and all that. And I was like, Oh, this is just like great filmmaking. Like this is an awesome story with great filmmaking. Yeah. And that's like, kind of the things that you know me like I that's what I like nowadays I, I don't really watch a lot of shonen anymore I did watch the latest Jujutsu mm-hmm. Kaisen season just because you made me yeah and then I loved it it is amazing uh, yeah I mean yeah shoujo like shoujo is one of my favorite genres like yeah. and that's one that I focused on watching a lot whenever I was watching like getting started on Netflix and stuff with like Blue Spring Ride mm. and um, oh, what is that other one that's kind of like that? Um, the Wolf Girl and Black Prince. Um, My Little Monster. I think that's what it's called. Wolf Monster. Girl and Black Prince? Yeah. I've never seen that. Just another shoujo about a girl that, like, gets um, blackmailed into, like, pretending to date uh, the, the, like, Prince Charming of the yeah. school because... She got caught taking a picture of him kind of thing. That old chestnut. Yeah. But it's fun. It's cute. But yeah, there's just like... I, I love shoujo, man. Shoujo is so good. It's so sweet. I, I like it. It is sweet. like sweet and romantic It's stuff. just It's just like... feel. It, it's like... Feel good isn't the right word. But it's like... Um, I don't know. It's like... I like those things that... I like those... My favorite anime are like the ones that capture like this either this feeling of 
like this air of innocence or like like purity almost where it's like it's uh, I don't know how to describe it. Like, Talk about the word wholesome. Wholesome. I mean, yeah, wholesome. Um, but like it, where it's like like I'm watching this one right now where it's uh, the uh, what is it called? It's it's where the dad's a manga artist and he's trying to keep it from his daughter. Yeah. Uh, what the hell? It's Tsutsuka. Tsutsuka. Tutu. Tutu Ramu. It starts with a T, I'm pretty sure. Oi, oi, oi. Nope. Isn't there a K? I thought it was talking about the K. No. It, hold on, I have it. It's one. It's one of my favorites as well. Um. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Kakushi Goto. Kakushi Goto. I was like, I know it starts with the K. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. That that one is because it's like it's like pure serotonin, wholesome. Yeah, I like, love that show. It's so good. Yeah. And it's like there's no like there's no over like sometimes in anime there are these overtones in mm-hmm. media in general there are these like overtones right. There's not. Yeah. It's just this guy who is a manga artist and he's trying to keep it from his daughter and he loves his daughter. Yeah. And that's it. And well, it, you know the premise of the show, right? How far are you into it? Four or five episodes. Okay. I'm pretty sure they tell you that, like, at the beginning, right, what's going on. He's just an edgy artist. Yeah. There's another, uh, there is a little, diff- like, side story, though. You should have seen it already. Not yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, well, you're in for a ride. <laughs> no! Wait, it, it wait. makes me cry. That show makes me cry. Oh, that he's dead? Huh? Is he dead? I'm not saying anything. Well, I mean, it, it, they allude to the fact that she's that he's dead. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Where, yeah, like, okay. No, 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 that's fine. That That's that, that's heartwarming, and yeah. it's honest, and it's... Yeah, where she's, like, learning about, like, her dad's yeah. story whenever he was raising her. Oh! Yeah, no, dude. Dude, when, a father-daughter story when, tears when, me when, up. So, when it came, I, I, I was like, okay, well, is it... But then it, the episode where, I think it's, like, three or four, where it shows the boxes of uh-huh. the years, yeah. where he was like, this is going to go in year eight, or yeah. whatever... And I was like, oh, I don't know about this. And then at the end of the episode, it's her, like, growing up. And it was, like, 17, 18, 19 yeah. that aren't finished. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> no, no this is going to tear me up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. For those watching, that's this premise of the show. Like, the, the like, trailer and the, like, the, the synopsis is, like, she's 18 whenever she's, like, the story starts. Yeah. And she's, like, going back over her, like, dad's, like, old house or whatever. His old, like, yeah, manga studio. Yeah, she's, like, yeah. learning his story because, like, he hid it from her. And then the the, the anime focuses on, like, the, the journey, like, the, the yeah. previous experiences of when she was a little girl. Yeah. And her dad was, like, a mangaka that was hiding yeah. his identity from her. <laughs> it's really sweet. It's so sweet, man. Yeah. Uh He's, like, when he's, like, doing his... And it's, like, it's got funny little hijinks in it, too. Where, like, the teacher or, like, there's, like, this cook uh, or for them, like, their little nanny or, like, uh, maid lady. And, like, these different people, uh, her, her little art teacher or whatever. And, like, he'll inadvertently flirt with them or something. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, oh, my God, he's into me. Like, oh, my God, is he asking me out right now? Yeah. And he'll, like, come up with flowers and stuff. Because yeah. he's, like, I wonder what what's her name will like with these, yeah. you know? And it's, it, it's literally all about the daughter. And there's all it, – it's – it's very like Three's Company esque, yeah. uh, like mis misunderstandings, yeah. you know, <laughs> that lead to these hijinks. Oh yeah, it's so funny. It's so good, and it's honestly really smart. Like that show is really smart. Oh yeah, I remember. Have you gotten to the Starbucks episode yet? Uh yeah, where like they they go in and the uh, the little girls go in, uh, her little friends go yeah. in. Yeah 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 yeah. I laughed so hard at that episode. <laughs> the way she talked about Starbucks in the... I forget what she says in that episode, but it's so funny. It's funny, too, the branding that they do, because it's yeah. like a... It's a starfish or something like that. Yeah. On the cups itself. Yeah. It's fucking... It's so yeah. fucking good. I think they, the kids think it's something crazy, and she's like, it's, it's just a Starbucks. Yeah, it's or just it's, a Star- Or maybe she thinks it's something crazy, like it's... Like, no, they think it's crazy. Yeah. yeah she's like, it's so it's silly. silly. Uh, yeah, it's, but yeah, so I love, I love shows like that now. Yeah. Um, or like those, again, like, I like Fooly Cooly, like that, that goes back to the, you know, the whole midnight generation shit, the adult swim yeah. and stuff. But like, again, that's one of those anime that you watch. Like, I remember watching it as like a 14 year old or 50, however old I was. And like, 
digging it, but again, it's made for like kids with ADHD. Yeah. You know, and it's like it's crazy monsters and these uh, you know, dope ass robots and crazy like I mean like insane the the language just you can't no one can see it but I'm like mouthing really fast with my hand. Mm-hmm. Uh like how fast they talk in that show is it's insane. Yeah. Um and you don't realize it until you watch it as like a 27 year old where you're like Oh, sh- this is like a complete love letter to like adolescence and childhood and mm-hmm. not like having all of this crazy shit come out of your head yeah. and not have any like you don't have any idea what any of this means. Yeah. And like it's such a beautiful love letter to that time in your life. Like mm-hmm. I literally have it on my arm. Yeah. Um, it's so beautiful. But like stories like that, I I love. Yeah. And like that's what I kind of lean towards nowadays anyway. Yeah, I think um I like I like a mixture of everything. Like I don't I don't resist any medium or genre of anime. Like I I just take it all. If it's going to be if it's highly rated and if it has like a good like um a good like solid base or solid foundation, I'll give it a shot, you know. Yeah. And I like all genres. Um but definitely like the ones that stick to me, stick with me and the ones that like I recommend to others are usually the ones that I feel transcend the like stereotypical feeling of anime that uh, like non watchers might have mm. and then kind of almost become like animated, just animated stories. Yeah. That like, like, you know, you just watched, um, keep your hands off Aza Ken. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Like uh, one of the first shows that I ever showed you was kids on a slope, you know? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's literally. Yeah. That, oof. Like those are the, those are the kind of shows that like, made me a fan you know i tell every like i i am such a broken record about kids on the slope to mm-hmm. everyone who's ever asked me about anime about getting into anime or what should i watch yeah i'm like you should you should maybe check out this you should maybe check out this and if you want something totally different yeah totally different that's a very singular story it's 13 episodes. It's wrapped up in a bow yeah. perfectly. It's Kids on the Slope. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to talk about a masterpiece, yeah. like, dude, that show is so unbelievably well crafted. Yeah. I mean, and again, like, it's like one of those, kind of like Azekin, where, like, it's such a love letter to a specific thing. Like, that show is such a love letter to not only jazz and music in general, but, like, also to animation and doing that. Because, like, to people don't know or who haven't seen it, or who have seen it and don't know, like, he animated, he had, he animated exactly, Watanabe animated the, uh, the two people who played drums and piano for Sin and, um, I always forget his name, the main character. Uh, shit. Anyway, uh, the two musicians Mm -hmm. who play those instruments, he filmed them and then animated almost in like rotoscope, like animated their exact movements, and like that was his like thing with the studio that he would not but like would not budge with. He was like because most most anime studios when they do like music and like that kind of movement, it's three D yeah imagery or three D stenciling. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not the same uh, the same two D system that they're using, uh, and you can tell yeah. Especially in like something like Beck or even in uh, Bochi the Rock, Bochi, did, right? yeah, yeah, which is phenomenal. It's so yeah. good. But even in Bochi, you can tell yeah. um, he refused to do that. And I mean, the the movement is so human. Yeah, it's but and it was expensive as shit to do. But it's so good, and it's such a love letter to like the how hard it is to do something like that in anime. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, have you watched many heartbreaking anime? Um, I mean, what do you mean? Like, like which ones? Um, so one that comes to my mind is like Tokyo Magnitude Eight. Uh, no, it's it's been on my list for a while, yeah. and it's one of those that I, I like. I put on there and I'll think about because I'll see it and I'm like, oh yeah, and I'm like, I am not in the right headspace to watch that right now. Yeah. Uh, I did that with uh Erased. Yeah. I wasn't quite ready for how a race was going to hit me. Yeah. And I was like, that, that was a 
bomb. Yeah. Uh, and it was almost the same thing with Anahana. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Anahana just because <laughs> you because you every told time. you told me about it before I ever watched it. You were like, dude, just do it. And you're like, you're gonna ball. Yeah. Like you're, it's gonna ruin your, it's gonna ruin you emotionally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was ready. I was ready in a way, but like, I wasn't really thinking. I remember we were shooting uh, the Outsider, and we were at this cave in Alabama, and I was in my hotel room, and I just had my laptop, and I just like, I was like, I had three episodes to go, I mm-hmm. think, in the series, yeah. <laughs> and I just sat in my hotel room and ball, dude, <laughs> in between going to set and uh, coming from. But I was just like, oh, my God, yeah. So, yeah, I do. (laughs) Well, what's, like, I know, like, I, I, you know, we share, like, you have my Crunchyroll account, so I see what you watch, you know. But, like, where have you changed in how you hunt for anime now? Well, for, I don't know if this is, no, it is, it has changed, because I didn't used to. I don't specifically look for it now, but I am deterred when I see a large episode count. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one thing that sticks out to me. Like, if I see something that's, like, 26 episodes, I'm like, oh, okay. Or even, like, 48 episodes, I'm like, all right. But if I'm seeing something that's, like, closer to 100, I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. And if I see, like, a nice one and done, like, a nice 13, yeah. Woo, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to give that a shot real quick. Yeah. Um, I think the main thing that I, like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I... I kind of fight hype. You do a little bit. I do, and I don't know what that is, and I know that I shouldn't. Like case in point with Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. Like I wrote off Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, we talked about it before, but like I don't, you know, I don't. I'm not really into shonen anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's just not my. It's not necessarily my thing anymore. And I and I thought the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen was very run of the mill shonen like it was naruto Mm 3.0 point for whatever point i'm not going to go all into it uh but then you kept nagging at me to watch the movie and i was like bro i'm not gonna watch this fucking movie and then we finally sat down and did we watch it first or did i watch it with jeff i think i watched it with you no we didn't watch the movie together oh i watched it i was so i watched that with jeff okay and then i watched the first four episodes of the second season with you yeah yeah and i was like what in the fuck is this? Yeah. What is happening? Why did they not? Why? Why did they not do this in the first season? Like, because it's a totally different show. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. Um, the main thing that I look for is legitimately just like not a lazy story. Yeah. Like, if I can kind of look at something and deduce that it's like had somebody had intention and like a little bit of heart in making it, then I'm gonna watch it. But mm-hmm. like, that's really what I. I don't look for, I don't know, like filler. I don't want to say I don't want to say that, but like filler anime, where you're kind of just looking for a show to throw on and pass the time. Mm. I kind of I kind of need something to have like a a purpose mm-hmm. for me to watch it these days. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I mean, it's like it's like food with me. Like, yeah. There's you have your meals, right? Yeah. So like there are times where I want to go out to dinner and I want to eat like a full meal, but sometimes I just want some white cheddar popcorn, you know? <laughs> and it's the same way with anime. Like I love my my hard hitting, you know, eight point plus yeah. um uh mm. score yeah. anime. And then sometimes I want to watch um freezing. Freezing? No. I mean, dude, freezing's good, dude. Freezing slapped. No, I was talking about, like, uh, uh, I'm OP in another world, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, All right. Like, yeah. classic, like, generic isekai. Yeah. Like, dude. That, that's weird. That's I love that we we do disagree about. Yeah. Okay. I love eating little little isekai snacks, man. Yeah. Uh, Just, like, num, num, num. I put I put some isekai on. I play some Minecraft. I isekai, put, hurt, they hurt my stomach. Oh, dude. Yeah. Solo leveling. Oh, so I'm going to watch solo leveling. Yeah. Just because I, I wanted to read it, and I didn't read it, and I, I went, when I heard they were doing an anime for it, I was like, all right, I, that yeah. that's when I'll get the chance. Well, I would say it's not exactly an isekai, though, because it's his world. Yeah. Like, isekai is another world. Yeah. So, it, but if you like isekai, you'll like it, you know, because it does follow the same kind of, like, pattern. 
Um, but I like the I like the the crappy isekai too, man. As long as the only thing that I ask for in a crappy isekai is to show me how they use the leveling. That's all I care about. It's got to have a like a legitimate leveling system. Yeah, and I think not to pull the A card, but I think it's an autistic thing. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I do. I think I like it. Like, I don't like Isekai where it's just a character that is from another world and he's just super OP and, like, you're just supposed to accept it. Yeah. Like, those are super boring to me. But there's, like, um, the... I forget what it's called. Something about being a cleric. Like, reincarnated as a cleric or something like that. That one surprised me of being really good because it's about this guy who was, like, a, a corporate businessman and um he gets reincarnated as um a slime no he just gets reincarnated as a, a guy in a fantasy like world where you can pick a class and you have a leveling system just like a rpg and he's like i want to help people so i'm going to be a cleric it's safe cuz i'm not i don't have the courage to fight monsters and stuff mm-hmm. um and i can everyone in, in any universe will need some type of like medical or healing so I can make it get a good job. He's like very business oriented. And so he becomes a cleric and like it focuses on the leveling system. Like he can't do any spells at the beginning and he has to train and do that to be able to get like basic spells like um, protection or healing, like minor healing. And then he uses those to like level up and then get major healing or, um, or like, you know, crazy like buffs and stuff. And then he becomes like a major like a battle cleric where he can like start fighting and stuff because he realizes that like to get stronger, he's going to have to start fighting yeah. and it just focuses on his leveling and it focuses on like how he puts his points and like what skills he buys and stuff. And that stuff scratches that itch so yeah. hard. To get your leg going. It does, man, because that's one thing like sort of online. Oh, duh. first season. No, 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 not even first season. First 14 episodes. Yeah. That's like the first season. No, first season is 24 episodes. The oh, first... I, I don't mean Elfheim. I don't mean all that I know, shit. that's season two. Oh, see, I break them up into separate seasons. I do too. But to, but re- in reality, you're saying that the first half of the first season. Is yeah, so the he wakes up... Well, no spoiler, but... It's been 15 years. It has been. He <laughs> wakes up in the hospital episode at the end of episode 14. Yeah, okay. So, um, what's it called? Elfheim Online? Elfheim. Or no, 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 no. That's not, that's the elf one. Sword Art. Um, what's the oh, name? Oh, uh. What's the name of the area? The, the world. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the world. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways, that takes place in episodes one through 14. And then, and then the next half is, um, uh. The, your, your cousin part with the really weird rapey part. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, but those first 14 episodes are so good. The yeah. stakes, the, the leveling where like you see him like gain points over time yeah. and like the explanations yeah. of like how things are going down and why. Yeah. yeah. It, it just like, it makes so much sense and it lets me kind of put in, put in perspective, like if it was me, you know, like, mm-hmm. okay, if it was me, like, what would I use my skills for? Yeah. What would I focus on? How would I explore this world to keep He's myself safe? He's wielding! Yeah. 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 Like, how would I keep myself safe? And stuff like that is just so fulfilling for my imagination. Yeah. And so I need that. But it doesn't take much. You know, you just give me a little bit of that. Yeah. And a story of, like, a, a new scenario and, like, a Sh- Shangri-La. Um, that's the one about the guy with the, the bird head, the blue bird head. Oh, that's one of the new ones. Yeah, Shangri La yeah. Frontier. That one is really good too, and it's I almost. Saw pop up on if you like sword art, yeah. like the the first fourteen episodes, I would recommend watching Shangri La Frontier. The stakes are not the same. Yeah, um, it's not life or death, but the the like way the gate like the way that world plays out is almost identical to sword art, and like the way like the leveling works, the way the enemies work. Um, the raids, all that stuff. What was the one that you told me about? You told me about it at Anime Weekend this past year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an isekai. Mm-hmm. But you said it was like... Oh, what was it called? I don't, remember, I don't remember anything about it. You said that it was... Uh, you said that it, it had like... A, it had a heart 
you said that there was more than just like your typical reincarnated as a vending machine or as a uh, vending machine type thing. Uh huh. I don't remember what, what it was called though. I've seen so many. I don't. I don't know. Oh God! It was coming out new then. It could have been the cleric one. Was it the cleric? I don't. I don't remember what it was called. This would have been back in what October. I mean, I could look, but I don't know. Anyway, my point is, there's a cup. There are a couple that I, I I will give a chance, like eventually. Yeah. Uh, it's just I don't know. Like my, there's just so many of them. That's there's, the problem. I know. Like, but that's why they're like little snacks. Yeah. Little snacky poos. Yeah. It just like helps fulfill that like hunger. It satiates the desire. Yeah. Desire. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, apart from anime, I haven't watched shit the past few years. Well, a lot of it is shit, so you're not missing too much. I know. I just I haven't watched any television. Dude, I, have, I don't remember the last time I watched a movie. I watched the last movie. I mean, that's a lie, because the last movie I watched was Godzilla Minus One. Yeah. But I've barely watched any blockbuster films, any like... I watched Batman a couple of days ago. For the the first new time. one? Yeah. What do you think? Didn't really do it for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't Something <laughs> in the way. God. I will say though, like I, I do, I do like that they use that song throughout the whole movie. Yeah. But just like in different arrangements. Yeah. With the orchestra, like the whole thing, but literally the whole tone of that whole movie is off of that one song. Yeah. Uh. I, yeah. I don't know. I just didn't care. No. That and I think that was what it is. Like it. It was like an art. It was like an art house kid wanted to make a badass Batman movie. Yeah. And um. Yeah, like I don't know. Like I just didn't care about even with Andy Serkis. Like it had so many people that I fucking dig. Like Andy yeah. Serkis was Alfred. Yeah. I like our Pats. Our Pats is a motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, Colin Farrell was awesome as the Penguin. Yeah. Like that weird like like New York style gangster thing. Yeah. That was dope. Yeah. It even had what's his face from uh, our flag beans death. Baby bullet, baby bullet. He's got that weird voice. It talks like this. Uh, can't remember his name, but um, oh, it had what's his name too? That's Gordon. Uh, from Westworld. Oh yeah, uh, I forget his name, dude. Like Benjamin. so, yeah. So <laughs> what? <laughs> so it had so many good people. Was that his name in Westworld? That wasn't Benjamin. It was. <laughs> <laughs> No, was it Arthur? No, it wasn't Arthur. Was it Arthur? It wasn't Arthur. It was Benjamin. It was not Benjamin. That is false. <laughs> uh, but it had so many like cool elements to it. Mm. I was just like, I, nothing ever hooked me. Like, ever. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a the, bummer. The only scene that I remember really liking in that whole movie was when he was trying to use his like glider, and he just eats ass oh, on the yeah. beam. Yeah, that was funny. That was the oh, Paul Dano had Paul Dano in it, acting his ass off. I acted like I was like, all right. Again, though, yeah. You know what? I like one thing that I didn't like about it is that they didn't start it. They're just like, you know who Batman is, so here's a Batman story. Yeah. And like, I don't. I know. I actually didn't mind that, honestly, just yeah. because like, I, how many times do I need? To, it's a, it's like the Spider Man thing. Like, I don't need to see Uncle Ben die again. <laughs> True. Like, for the love of God. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I didn't mind that, but something just didn't jive with it. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm the same way. I, I I watch shows, like, with Shelby here and there, but uh, uh, a lot of it's just, it's older stuff. We were, we were watching Seinfeld. Just nothing stuff. is grabbing me. No. Like, uh, we are watching Only Murders in the Building, which is pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's silly. It's just if you like the old like Steve Barton, Martin Short stuff, like Father of the Bride or Sergeant Bilko or anything like that, like you'd like Only Murders in the Book because it is just silly. Mm. It doesn't take itself too seriously at all. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think that I think there's. I mean, it's pretty apparent. Like with all the Marvel stuff, there's this huge like quality dip. In live action, anyway. Yeah, for sure. Uh, which it, there's a lot of reasons, but I tell you, I finally do have a movie that I'm looking forward to. What? That's uh, Adam Sandler's new space movie coming out. I have not seen this. Oof. 
It looks good. It looks, it's a drama, mm-hmm. um, a psychological drama about um, an astronaut who is spending years in space alone. Mm-hmm. And he starts to go through like, like levels of like psychosis and like trauma, like, like mental trauma from being alone for so long. Yeah. Um, and it, Adam Sandler is the astronaut. And like, it's, it's like, I think, I don't know the plot based on, Based on, like, the trailer, it looks like he gets visited by extraterrestrials. Mm. But it, they're pinning it on, like, the idea of, like, is he losing his mind because he's been in space for too long? Or is he actually being visited yeah. by, you know, other worlders? Yeah. And it looks good. It, like, very panicky. Very, like, Do you know who's doing existential. It? Is, it H- is it A24? I or, no, it's probably Netflix, isn't it? He has, like, a deal with Netflix. Oh, I don't think it's a Netflix. Oh, it could be. It could be. Could be. I know Happy Madison has a deal with Netflix, but this doesn't sound like a Happy Madison. No, no, no. This is a drama. This is like a maybe it's even a psychological thriller, like to... similar to Moon. Moon. I don't remember Moon. Moon was uh, Sam Rockwell, where he's in space, and he's like at the space station, managing his space station, and he has this robot who I think is Kevin Spacey, and he ends up finding a body. It is Netflix. It's called Spaceman. Spaceman. Oh, sorry. On behalf, I'm just trying to pause. Whatever. I think one thing that people won't know about us is like how obsessed we are with Pokemon. Yeah. We talked about it, I think, here and there throughout the old reaction channel. Yeah, yeah. I think we all, for a while, we had like my Bulbasaur uh, blanket that I've had since I was like eight years old. Yeah. Behind us for a while, the longest time. I, but we at that time weren't collecting. No. Which, what the hell were we doing? We were fucking up. We do. We missed out on on all of evolutions. We missed. I out. mean, we didn't miss out on it because I ended up finding stuff in like twenty eighteen that yeah. was older. But we could have gone hard. Duh, with it. I, one of this. I was, okay, so one of my biggest regrets of like not buying something. I don't have a lot of those, but I remember it. But we were so broke, bro. We were stupid. We were so we broke were in twenty seventeen. Good God, yeah, that's true. We were. Uh, I remember. Remember when we used to go to Barnes and Nobles mm-hmm. and just like look around, yeah, and like window shop. I remember we went to the Barnes and Nobles over on Memorial and or Moreland, and uh, we walked in there and they had the Mewtwo. It was a Mewtwo box set mm-hmm. of nothing but evolutions, and it had the Mewtwo pin. Mm-hmm. Do you remember all that? And it was like I think it was like twenty five dollars, and I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. I gotta pay rent, bro. Yeah, no. can't do that. Yeah, and I was still in my mentality of like. Pokemon cards are dead now. Yeah, and I was like, I haven't collected Pokemon. And I, I at the time, too, because I didn't realize... I didn't realize what Evolutions was. Yeah. You know? Um, you just like stupid reprints. Yeah, well, even on the... I think... I think... On one of the... The Blast... It wasn't the Blastoise one. Wasn't it like him as a Mega Evolution? Yeah. yeah so I was like, I don't give a shit about Mega yeah. Evolution. So yeah. like... I know. I saw, I was seeing all like the pictures of like the Dynamax stuff yeah. and all that. I was like, these look dumb. I, don't I was give a like, shit. I remember looking through the books of like Pokédexes at Walmart and be like, dude, the new gens look terrible. Yeah. So I just, I yeah, I just thought it was a dumb thing to do. But I literally, I I remember seeing that and I almost bought that thing. It was there. I mean, it was there for a long time because it was a Barnes and Noble. Is it still there? <laughs> well, Barnes and Noble is gone now. <laughs> so no, unfortunately not. Uh. Somebody got it, but I, I just wanted that pin. I wanted that pin so freaking bad. Was it just a Mewtwo pin? Yeah, I almost bought it on eBay a while back. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of faded because it's like milky, mm-hmm. like the the colors on him. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a shiny, yeah, purple. It was like this milky mm-hmm. type thing. Um, God, I wanted it so bad. That's one of the biggest regrets of my life is not buying that box. Yeah, not getting more evolutions because like. The, just yesterday, he I asked him about the evolutions box up there. Yeah, or not the uh, before he got there, he had it. They have a evolutions. Yeah, a bunch of evolutions stuff. Same with legendary treasures, <sighs> David. I should have gotten more legendary treasures. Yeah, but I I was like, these are just reprints. And then I like now that reverse hollow Eevee is one of my most valuable cards. You know. Yeah. Like, and I whenever I pulled that card, I was just like. This is just a reverse hollow basic Eevee? Like, that's so stupid. Yeah. And so I didn't buy anymore. I was like, I'm not wasting my money on these. And lo and behold, like, 
But um, before, like, we like we <laughs> all that explain the exposition of, like, people don't know how much we have, like, grew up with Pokemon and, like, you know, as adults who like Pokemon, there's, you know, can sometimes be a stigma against it, but... I think you and I don't. No, I think I no, I, no hell no. Um, growing up is giving up, and I yeah. say that all the time, and I fucking live by that. Yeah. Um, Pokemon with our generation is just always gonna have this like beautiful. It's just an attachment to this beautiful time in your life where it was just you and your buddies, and you were trying to catch them all. Yeah. And it was beautiful, and it was innocent, and it was yeah. sweet, and it was right. And it, it you know, it, it's connecting in a way to that, like, inner child that you still have. and But it's like being able to do all the things that that inner child couldn't do. Exactly. <laughs> With Pokemon. Dude, I am fulfilling my <laughs> younger self's dream now. Dude, all the times that I walked into, like, Walmart mm-hmm. or that game store that was on South Main Street in High Point, North Carolina. I cannot remember the name of it. Um, and I would walk in there and be like, Mom, can I please have some packs? And she'd be like, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, and me just being like, God, not knowing that, you know, my dad's business was going under and like all this stuff. (laughs) But like, Ethan now can afford to buy packs. So he's going to get packs. Yeah. Uh, I I think if if I live long enough to time travel, I'm going to go back. That's it. I'm just going to go to myself and be like, yo, don't worry about a thing. (laughs) All right. Here, here's $500. Yeah. You're going to buy all of these booster boxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're going to be set for fucking life. Yeah. yeah. Get, look, I'm going to give you just, I'm just going to give you enough to buy one, one Evolutions booster box. Okay. No, you're going to buy two because one you're going to open, one you're going to keep. Oh, okay. Because then you're going to sell that sucker for, you know, $100,000. Yeah. In, you know, 20 years. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're into the TCG. Um, yeah. And, we started collecting with celebrations. You started collecting okay. like hard with celebrations. Yeah. I was late to it. I, well, you got some of the McDonald's. I, I that's I where I got else. started in. It yeah. Was I was doing the McDonald's, but and then like randomly picking up a pack, yeah, like or whatever, yeah. but not really realizing what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I found a tin. It was like the lunchbox tin, uh, at Cracker Barrel. In, like, May of 2022. Yeah. And uh, that's what, because I had some good pulls off of that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I think we're back, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is rad. Yeah, Celebrations was just really cool. Like, the Happy Meals, the 25th anniversary was just so, like, I don't know, it kind of sparked it. It was, like, 25 it years. Like, that's it was like special. A... It, was, it yeah. was fucking special. They, they put the right Pokemon yeah. out on the set. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember... I, I, re- I remember going to that same McDonald's outside of Pinewood, down the road from Pinewood, coming home, right before you get on the highway, and I would stop and get there and get two Happy Meals a night, and I would go in there for lunch and get two Happy Meals. Yeah. You know what I mean? To the point where I... Did I ever tell you about the homeless person story? No. Where I, I couldn't eat chicken nuggets anymore. I... Bro, I was... I'd eaten so many yeah. in the past month. I couldn't do it. And I went in there. I got two McNugget Kids Meals. Uh, for the packs, and I was like, I know at the the Moreland exit on twenty, there's uh, there's always three people there. They're the same people, and I was like, I'll just I is have that to the st- top of the bridge. Uh, no, it's right where right. cookout the exit where cookout is. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, on top of the bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and there was this woman and two guys always there, and I was like, I'm just gonna go that way anyway and give it to them. And I like pulled up, had these two. They're so hot. Yeah, and like. I had I had them and I hadn't touched them at all. And the chick comes up to my car, and uh, I was she was like, "Hey man, do you have any money for uh, you know get some money?" I was like, "I don't have any money, but I have these these Happy Meals." And she was like, "I don't want fucking food, man. I just want money for drugs, man. I just want money for fucking drugs, man." <laughs> and dude, she got she was coming into my car, and I was like, "Ah!" <laughs> <Just laughs> Stepped off the gas. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, bitch. And just kept going, like, on the ramp. But I was like, good lord, man. So that's my, like, I, whenever I think of that set, I always think of that story. Yeah. I mean, she got so, I mean, she got, at least she was honest. Yeah. I just want money for drugs, man. I was like, God. Uh, but yeah, so we're back in the TCG. But so, I, 
You didn't play as a kid. No. Or, like, really as a kid. I didn't play. It was just, like, playground rules. Yeah. You know, just like, well, I've got a Hitmon. I know he's good against a Zapdos. You yeah. know, whatever. Um, and just, like, that's all we did. Yeah. So, uh, we were just collected as kids, and, like, we were, I don't know, I guess you did it first. You were like, I kind of want to play. Right? I think you were, because you maybe. were like, may, or maybe I was like, let's play. Uh, yeah. Somebody was like, what yeah. if we... Try to build a deck. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just, I think I was like collecting and I just happened, like my algorithm started to show me parts of the tournament. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I've been watching the tournament and it's like. Freaking cool. I kind of would like, would like, I feel like if I was building a deck, I would be able to use what I have to build a deck and. Yeah. Uh, Like, you know, probably make it happen. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, maybe it was me. And then, but you like took the reins a little bit harder because like. Well, I just get, I get, I get sucked into yeah. shit. Like, I get, I don't like, to, I don't like to say I'm obsessed, but like, I get obsessed with things. Yeah. Well, the difference between you and me is that like, I'll hyperfixate on something, but I'll hyperfixate on learning about something. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you hyperfixate, you actually like get into it and like, <laughs> like actually pursue it. But that's just because that's the only way that I can learn. Yeah. Like, I can't, I'm not good about watching, like, Obviously, I do, but like, I'm not good about watching something and learning about it and then doing it. Like, see, yeah. that's the only way that I can learn about it is yeah. by just like plunging my hands in and doing yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I was like, dude, let's let's freaking do this. Yeah. So I went and bought. I saw. I was looking up decks because I didn't know what was popular in the meta, you know, or what was pop, or what was a good deck versus a bad deck, and yeah, I, I saw the Mew. And I saw, I was like, oh, that guy won Worlds last year, so that's got to be a good deck. And then I saw they had just come out with the Battle League, VMAX Battle League deck. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, that's convenient. Mm -hmm. So I got that, and you were like, well, I think I'm going to do Gardevoir. Yeah. So you built your Gardevoir deck. Yeah. Yeah, and that was so, that was really fun getting into the TCG because I had like, at this point, you know, we've been collecting or I've personally been collecting since the 25th anniversary. Yeah. So I've gotten like a stockpile of stuff. Yeah. You've and, literally got enough to do a business with. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, I guess we didn't talk about that in the, <laughs> the whatever. We'll get to it. But um, yeah, I just like, that was so fun of like looking up this deck list and then going through my boxes and like, kind of like, like a filing cabinet and be like, oh yeah, here's a bat- battle VIP pass. Um, oh yeah. I do have this curly and that Ralts, you know, like, yeah. Um, oh, Luminium V. I got that. And that was really fun. That was like a whole new like aspect of collecting where like I saw my collection as not just like my pulls and my bulk, Mm -hmm. but now I have like, you know, like trainer cars and I have like ability cars and I have, you know, de-evolutions and all kinds of stuff. And it's just like changed how I see my collection and how I collect and how I like engage with the packs when I open. Like, yeah, it added a new level and I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. But yeah, getting in the TCG, we did our, like, I did my first tournament play, league play, league play, yeah. night the other night with you. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Cause a lot, of, most of the time we, we just play each other on Discord or in lot, like, we go to either one, one of our houses and play like that. Uh, but we're mostly just playing with each other. <laughs> yeah. 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 We do that a lot. Yeah. Um, I fold you, you fold me. Yeah. 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 I, I lick you. I mean, you, I mean, what? You, uh, what? Uh, no, but we're mostly just playing against each other. Yeah. And it, so I, I went to the, my first league night a couple weeks ago and that was wild because even at something that small, cause the first night I went, it was a uh, open play or casual play. And even something that there was maybe like 25 people there. And even something that small was like, oh, there are different levels to this. And then I went the very next week, and it was an actual. Tur- I didn't know that it was an actual tournament week, and I was, and there was like seventy five to one hundred people there. Whoa, yeah, there's a lot of people there, yeah. and I was like, oh. And then I saw like, oh, there are levels to this. Yeah, like I played my first match with. I played my ride on. Uh, that's my new deck uh, that I built since my new deck. Um, and I played against uh, a Roaring Moon for the first time. And uh, for anyone who's played the TCG, uh, Roaring Moon is a behemoth yeah. right now. 
as of February 5th, 2024. Yeah. He's a new big boy. Like he's, and I, and I literally like all the whole night, all the other people were like, the, I was talking with the guy who's a Gratina player, two Charizard players. And the other guy was, uh, what was the other guy? I can't remember what he was. He might've been a, a lost on player or lost box player. Uh, but they were all like, yeah, the biggest one that we hate going up against is Roaring Moon. And I was like, no way. Like, there's no way. Yeah. And dude, that, so you like joke around about mine just stacking up so fast. My Maraidon mm-hmm. deck just coming out so fast. I have never went up against a deck that just sets up so hard mm-hmm. where it's like, what do you, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, it's so insane. Yeah. Um, I mean, people call it Dark Maraidon. I guess on that point, I see why they call it that. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause once he start, once he, the kids started, and that was the other thing too, that it, this is like a funny part of the process. It's like the kid who was piloting the deck, he, he couldn't have been more than 13. Really? I like, just kicked my ass, dude. Yeah. And like, he was one of those kids that was like, why are you doing that? Oh God. Why are you doing that? I'm just like, cause I don't know what I'm doing. Jesus. That's when you start making those. Because I'm a 32 year old decided to get into Pokemon. That's when you start making those threats. Be like, Jesus. You better shut your mouth or I'll kill your dad. (laughs) (laughs) I know where you live, little boy. You don't have to cut all this out. Yeah. Um, No, but it was just like, it was so wild to see like the nonchalantness of like how easily he went through sequence. Yeah. And just like, oh yeah, we're going to have to pop. And And I put this and then pop and you're good and you're done. You know, and it was yeah. like every turn still, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this in my head, I'm gonna do this. Shit roadblock. Yeah. Oh god, should I do this first or what 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 makes sense? You know, yeah. and I'm still getting stuck on stuff like that. And we're we're still really new to it. But yeah, we are. It's just wild seeing the levels yeah. in the game. Yeah. I think one thing that's gonna help us is learning about the theology of playing a deck. I think that's where we're running into roadblocks is that a lot of these of people... Of, like, specific decks or just in general? In like, general, like, yeah. play. I think what we struggle with is, like, knowing how to use the decks to, like, our advantage yeah. and, like, have, like, an overall understanding of what the deck needs to do and push through that. Because I think we know how our decks are used, but then we're, like, so focused on getting the strategy to work out the way we think it's supposed to that we're not, like... We don't have like a deep like over our overall understanding or wherewithal of like the deck to be able to just play it and feel comfortable playing it, you know? Yeah. I think that would help us a lot because I struggle with the same thing where like people seem to know what they want to do before the the option to do it even happens. Yeah. And like me, like I draw and then I'm like, okay. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think understanding like there's probably some kind of so probably some kind of like breakthrough we need to have mentally that switches us from like thinking turn to turn mm-hmm. and just like thinking like, okay, my object objective needs to be winning this turn mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, if that's right. If that's right. Yeah. I, there might be people listening to this and like you fucking idiots. Yeah. 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 But yeah. if that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever. So like, and that will like, change how we play yeah. you know we'll go from like looking you know hand to hand to just like having a vision and like knowing how to like navigate that vision as you draw yeah. or whatever yeah yeah we talked about that before where I, I i'm like i that's wild right where uh we just looked at the time and i was like well, i can't believe it's been like two hours since we started this two uh yeah oh i thought yeah. i said four yeah <laughs> Can you imagine we've been recording for four hours? <laughs> we've got four episodes. No, uh, we talk about it when we're playing. Where I'm like, oh my god, I just like completely got tunnel vision on like my main strategy, and totally like, t- I mean, blind, complete blinders on. Didn't see my entire board and the deck that I just looked through. Mm-hmm. I know what I've got. I know what's prized. And I still am trying to make this one strategy work. Yeah. Whereas, like, I think, and I think it kind of comes to, like, muscle memory and being 
very comfortable with your deck. Yeah. You know, and just being able to be like, all right, well, like, I don't know. But it, it's more than that. It's 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 being able to actually see your full board. And I, I am having problems with that. Yeah, I think with you, what I've noticed about your deck and how you play it and when you... Because you, I noticed that you often, like, with my deck, I stopped making mistakes. Mm-hmm. Like, my deck doesn't really have mistakes to be made. I mean, I can, but kind of, it just kind of... What's again you're playing? It's Armourouge. Armourouge Char- is it just Armourouge Charizard, or is it... Um, I wouldn't necessarily, it's Armourouge Charizard. I would say it's more Ar- uh, Arceus Armourouge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the Charizard is basically just a draw engine. Yeah. Or, or an ability use. Okay. But it could be... It's just an Armourage deck with Arceus and Charizard. Yeah. Um, but with you, like, you have a lot of cards that are used specifically for your mons, you know? Yeah. And you have mons that are specifically used for your other mons and things like that. But I think one thing that I noticed with you is that... You have an idea, like, this is something that I ran into with uh, Hearthstone when I was playing Hearthstone a lot, mm. where I had an idea of, like, who I wanted my, like, let's call it the champion or whatever to be, and I would work through getting him set up. So the whole time I'd be, like, doing things in motion to get that person set up, and then the player would take that out, and then I'd be like, well, what? now what I do? But what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> so I think one thing that, like... For your deck, or for you specifically, it says stop thinking about one specific card as being your lead and everything else being a catalyst to make that work. And knowing, like, who is key. Yeah. And, then, like, so if you know, like, my Raichu is key. Okay, well, then get your Raichu on the board. Focus on doing what you need with that Raichu. Yeah. My Flaffy is key. So focus on, like, how to get your right, your Flaffy on the board. Use those abilities the way they're supposed to be used. Well, it's like, so the biggest thing with me is, like, I so, like, I know that, like, at this point, especially since, like, with the rotation coming, like, Flaffy is going to be done with rotation. That yeah. does it. So I'm trying to think of ways anyway where I'm like, okay, do I not have to use Flaffy? And am I still able to get consistent energy mm-hmm. on my Pokemon? Which I think I am. And especially with, like, using energy stickers and EXP share eventually, like, that's going to help. Yeah. But... My biggest issue is, like, I know, like, for example, I know Raichu is a late-game Pokemon. I don't have to bother setting him up Mm -hmm. because he's only two energy to do god amounts of damage, damage, right? What I need, but I know, is that Maridon and Iron Hands Mm -hmm. are my two big attackers, right? The only thing that I struggle with is, like, realizing, okay... You've got single, you've got basic Pokemon out, um, like not V's, but like your Charmander or whatever, yeah. um, Charcadet. I'm like, I know that I can take out those with my Iron Hands mm-hmm. and I can get two prizes off of them. Yeah. But I will have this internal dilemma of like, fuck, I gotta get four. I gotta get four energies on this turn to put him out. Mm hmm. If he's on my bench, and then hopefully I have a switch or it's my Mew in the active position. But if not, then I got to make sure that I have another energy to attach for turn mm-hmm. to get the Maridon out. And then so I'm like, I'll start doing this thing in my head where I'm like, all right, so do I just like, do I just focus on the Maridon because he's an easy pick because he's got three and I can just do that way easier. And I'll still have the card in my deck, you know, in my hand for active. I'll switch out. And it's just, that's the internal, like, and I'm, I'm doing that whole thing in like a matter of like five seconds or yeah. trying to, yeah. and I'll, but I'll, I'll just goof. And I did it in the, I did it the, in the tournament that I did a couple of weeks back. Uh, I, I went one and three in that tournament and I should have went two and two. Luckily the second time I did it, I won that game, but I literally could have won the whole game. In the first turn, in my first turn. Yeah. And the same thing with another matchup that I lost. I could have won that whole game in my first turn if I'd have just paid attention to what I had. Yeah. And what I should have done. Yeah. But I just get, I get squirrel brain and I'm, it's just going back and forth of mm-hmm. like what I should do. Yeah. I got to figure out what to get around that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I've learned a lot. Like the Gardevoir, I would like to try Gardevoir again with mm-hmm. my new knowledge that I learned from playing TCG Live and playing this Armorage deck. Because Armourage deck is so much more simplified 
-hmm. but I learned something playing it. And that's the cards that I need to have on the board as soon as possible to where I can get engaged, like, right off the bat. Yeah. So, like, clearly, Shark Cadet, I need to get on the board, and my armor is need to get on the board because those are my attackers. But that Go Charizard... Vital. Vital. Essential. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, like, that's why, like, not... For the two games we played at the league night yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Like, not pulling a single Ultra Ball, not good. Yeah. You know, not great. Um, so, but I know that, like, nothing else matters, right? Like, if I pull other Mons, I can choose to either put them out or not. I can, like, focus on what your board looks like. Mm -hmm. But really, like, I can't sit here and try to strategize apart from knowing that, A, get as many energies on the field as possible, get that go Charizard out, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's basically it. You get that as many energies on the board as possible, get that Charizard out. And then if I get, like, you know, I use Magma Basin and Serena, like, if I get those two on the board, then I have, like, you know, a healthy way to get energy out. But that go Charizard is key. And so my focus isn't on, like, okay, do I do this strategy or do I do that strategy? It's just... Can I get my Charizard out? No. Okay. Next turn. Can I get the Charizard out? No. Okay. Next turn. And that helped me like change how I play the game. So like Gardevoir, I remember like I lost so much with the Gardevoir. Like it felt like I couldn't do anything with it. Yeah. And it was because I didn't figure out what my key cards were and mm -hmm. focus on those. Right. It was on this grand strategy of, okay, you have the Gardevoirs, which they give you energies out of your discard. You, want to make sure you're discarding lots of energies. You have your Mew for draw. You have your Gardevoir or your Greninja for draw. And you have your Shining Arcana for draw. Your, and, but there's no like, who, who's the lead? Who's the, and then I played a Gardevoir where they put their Zashian on the field turn one. Yeah. And then just started using everything else in that whole deck just to, to get power the him up. Going. Yeah. And he destroyed me. Yeah. And I realized that's whenever I started thinking about my deck, my armor's deck, and thinking about how I had used the Garvor deck in the past, where like they just the, both of these things were just a matter of picking your key player, getting them on the board, and starting to power them up. Because really, until like your opponent has time to set somebody up to take that guy out, the faster you get that champion out, the more you're gonna kill. And the more you're going to get those prize cards, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of like, for I think for our focus until we get better at playing, maybe that's our, our strategy to focus on. Yeah. You know, and maybe that'll help us get more wins, yeah. get more points, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think I definitely do. Another thing too is like, not only, it's like, for me, it's not only figuring out what's the right Pokemon to use on my side, but like. I think I also overanalyze what you're doing on your side of the board. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. And now then I got to, once I do this, he's going to do that. And then I got to, which I think once I have a better understanding of the game, yeah. that might be good because yeah. your thinking moves ahead. And that's right. what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But right now, I can't focus on the task at hand because I'm I'm trying to think two or three moves ahead. Yeah not trying to think i am thinking three moves ahead and it's just ruining yeah especially when you don't know what's going to happen three moves ahead yeah and and that's the thing about maridon too is maridon is such a i think that's why he's such an attractive deck yeah is because he can do so much damage yeah but it's based off of a lot of it's based off a of chance yeah. with your generators right so let's say so i'm doing the peony build now peony peony i always hit where I've got that card, and instead of using Arvin and pulling one generator and a four seal stone or something, and then, then I can pull another generator. I'm using that peony, pulling two generators, so I've immediately got two, right? And then I've still got my four seal stone I can use later on. Um, but it's like, if I, if I can't get the amount of energy that I need from those generators, that's where my squirrel brain comes in. Because then the strategy that I just had of like, all right, well, this is simple. I'm going to go ahead and power up my Iron Hands because you've got nothing but basic Pokemon on the board. That's what makes sense. I've got the energy in my hand to attach to my active to get him out of there. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, well, I just went ahead and peonied. 
that took the energy out of my hand and put it in my discard pile. I don't have a Flaffy set up yet, so I can't get it back yet. Now I just, like, I didn't pull... Or let's say I did. Let's say I did. I pulled four generator or four energy off a generator, right? I got them on there. I don't have a Mew out because I was trying to think, oh, I'll just go ahead and put out my Zapdos and my Flappy. That way I have a I have a attack buff and then I can get energy back. Well, I don't have a Flappy. All right, I've got my Zapdos, but now my board's filled up, so I can't put out my Mew. Do the restart, and it's like all this. Sh- it ugh, it's just yeah yeah. It's a lot going on in my head. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. I just need to get more comfortable with the deck, and yeah, for also, sure. also I need to build that deck. In how TCG. I how no, I have it in TCG Live. Oh. How I want to do it, I just need to go ahead and commit to putting it into the, my cardboard. Yeah, that's what that's the same with like doing the having the Serena in my online deck and realizing I need to put this in my yeah physical deck because it just works well. Yeah, yeah. Because right now I still have I put that other Iron Hands in there. But I still have a Raikou in there, which I don't even need anymore because that build doesn't use it. Yeah. I'm probably going to have to build a stronger deck for a tournament, official tournament night. My deck, I think, is like fun, and I like it, but... I don't think you do as long as you have a good way to get... Uh... You're making me want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you do as long as you have a good way to get your Charizard out. Yeah. I think added an extra Ultra Ball. Yeah. Or, what was the... I was just looking at it. I was literally just looking at it. It allows you to pull two evolu... Two evolu... Oh, your TM. Yeah. How many of your TMs do you run? I don't use TMs. Oh. Because that's what a lot of people are using right now. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of people are using I mean, it uses that... It, but it sets you up next turn. Yeah. So, if you know that you want to pull out two Charizard... Boom. Yeah. Or like you know you or yeah, let's say you've got your armor rouge out already and you're just like, I need these fucking Charizard. Boom, you got your two Charizard. Yeah. Ready to go next turn. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so weird how it plays differently from TCG online to physical. Yeah. Cause online I'm winning almost every game. Mm. You know? Like I'm doing it so well. My draws come out so healthy. Yeah. The draws are, uh, yeah. The draws, I guess, just all come into the shuffle and the luck. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. If I could get that same luck in, like, real life, I would probably have much better yeah. games. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been fun getting into it. And, like, having it change the way I collect is cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I definitely want to keep going to the League Nights. Yeah, for sure. Um, Anybody that is... Anybody that's like thinking about going to it, maybe you're like the same position that we're in or like we're just in where you're like, I'm getting into it and I like want to try to see what it's like, but I'm kind of not sure. Just do it. It's it's so fun. Yeah. It's like you're just accept the fact that you're going to lose because yeah. you're going to a yeah. lot. That's and that's fine. Literally nothing will happen if you lose. Yeah. You're just going to learn. That's all. Um, just get that league pack. Just, oh, yeah, dude, we didn't even talk about the league packs. You get league packs, in case you don't know. Whenever you go to a league event, you get the league pack. Uh, usually they do it where it's like one league pack for showing up and then different packs of whatever set is out. You can pick like one pack from each set per win that you get. So go to league night. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like I would – I as an introvert and like someone who's slightly maybe a, a teeny tiny teeny tiny teeny tiny bit agoraphobic or not agoraphobic um agoraphobic acrobatic is it agoraphobic where you're afraid to go outside yeah yeah um having just get a buddy <laughs> Get a buddy yeah. that wants to go with you yeah. and it makes it so much better like i didn't want to ask for leak packs yesterday <laughs> You want to go up and ask for league packs with me? <laughs> and as soon as we went up to the thing, he was like, y'all ready for some league packs? And we're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like yeah. It, uh, it before that, I was like, what if he says no? Like, what if he's like, did you sign in? It's like, ah, yeah. anxiety. But it, no, going alone and then going with someone else, it is 100% way more fun to go with someone. Yeah. But on that same note, 
if you don't have someone. If you don't have someone, it's totally fine. You're going to meet yeah. someone there who's... Yeah, once you chill. get there, you realize, like, oh, these are all just people just like me. Yeah, like, legitimately. Like, all, like, pretty much all these people are just like me. Yeah. 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 And there are a lot of kids, and, like, I was talking about it yesterday. I was like, I kind of feel like I want to be an uncle. Like, I want to be, like, a little uncle to these kids. And like, yeah. So, I think next time, I'm going to bring my trade deck or my trade binder yeah. and maybe some free stuff and just, like, mm. hook some kids up and have some fun, you know? Yeah. Like, that way, like, A, I feel like an uncle and not just, like, an adult playing with a bunch of kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and second of all, I could just, like, you know, hook some kids up and make some kids happy. Yeah. But that, like, whenever you get there, you realize, like, it's a super safe place. Mm -hmm. Like, super, like, low judge, like, no judgment. Like No, there's no judgment. And, like, usually on this, the official league nights, like, there's a professor system. So, like... You don't have to worry about getting, like, bullshitted out of a trade or something. Because um, most of them, like, you'll you go through the professors and stuff a lot of times. Yeah. Especially with the kids. Yeah, like yeah. The, like, they're really on top of making sure that the kids aren't getting duped by older kids. Right. You know, which we literally saw almost happen the yeah. first time we went in that one yeah. shot. Uh, but also, there's these great things. Uh, there's apps. That are available now, like Collector and uh, TCG. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, TCG Trader, TCG Pro Player, T TCG Player. Yeah, um, that give you like live, real time, uh, up to date values on cards. Yeah. So if someone comes to you with a trade, you can literally pull them up and be like, "Oh, okay. Well, yeah. this is a way more valuable card." Yeah. Also, quick note: if you're buying stuff on Facebook or whatever. Look up the prices online first. Look up the prices and haggle. Yeah. Haggle. Because I'm seeing these posts on Facebook Marketplace of these guys. You know those gold cards I have? Those? the You see the gold the gold deck oh, cards? Oh, yeah. You were talking about you know, that. People are selling those cards for like $100. Yeah. And those are like from like yeah. AliExpress. Yeah. Like those are like 20 not bucks. not real cards, kids. Yeah. This I keep seeing ads of like uh like a dark Charizard gold and it's like gold dark Charizard. They look cool. Very rare. They look four hundred dollars. Really cool. Yeah. It's like no man. This this is like a ten cent little fun Alibaba. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just for fun. Like it's not a real card. So whenever you see if you're like well I guess I need to start buying cards I can look for Facebook Marketplace and get some good deals like double check. Yeah. I saw a guy selling a binder the other day that was like oh it's uh one fifty one cards very rare you know. And it's like whatever price he said. I was like, no, nope, you don't know. You're just you're just upselling. There's a bunch of reverse hollows. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's just like a couple. It's just like two pages of a binder yeah. for like forty bucks. I was like, no, man, yeah. no. There are a lot of shysters out there, but luckily you do have internet. Yeah, the internet and Use specifically it, some really cool Pokemon app. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure we'll be bringing up the TCG a lot more. Since it's like kind of yeah, I mean, our biggest hobby at the moment. It is. It's it's pretty active, and I want to continue to grow with it. Yeah, and learn more <clears throat> and get better at it. So, uh, if you guys are, if any of you guys listen are in the Atlanta area, um, Wasteland Games is one that's north of the city. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're we're gonna hit that one up. Yeah, and then uh, I forget the name of the other place. But yeah, come by to any of the league nights yeah. if you're in the area yeah. or go to the league night in your local area. Yeah, and you can always just message us on um, Instagram or, or Twitch or whatever. Uh, well, thanks for joining us, everyone. This has been Born to be Nerd Podcast. Uh, hope you enjoyed. If you want to catch any of our other material, uh, you can follow Born to be Nerd on Instagram. You can uh, follow Born to be Nerd underscore live on Twitch. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see some of our old videos and stuff on there. And eventually you'll start seeing some new stuff. Yeah. Um, we'll be posting podcasts um, maybe twice a month or so moving forward. So feel free to, to follow us on whatever audio site you're using and yeah. keep your eye out for future episodes. Episode one in the bag. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next time. See you.